guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing and I am here with a weekly wrap up. I got four books read in total. I'm almost finished a fifth book um, this week and I'm going to tell you all about them now, as always. So the first book I read this week was A Witchy Read, seen as it was Halloween week and that was The Graces by Laura Eve. Um, this is a YA kind of witch book um, based around a girl called River who moves into this town with her mum um, and she immediately finds out that there is this kind of family, um, three of them being teenagers, um, in this town they're known as the graces and everyone kind of seems to think that there's something kind of mysterious around this family um they everyone believes that they have kind of magical witchcraft powers and river immediately becomes really enamored by the three of them and she decides that she's going to try and become their friend and before too long she does end up kind of being brought into the group and we're kind of seeing how river kind of she kind of feels like for the first time she can be herself around these three teenagers but at the same time she's still very much on the outside and we're just kind of seeing how things seem to be really good for a while but they eventually start getting a little bit dark um so i did actually quite enjoy this um it is very much like a ya book there is a lot of ya tropes in it you know the um it can be quite juvenile like for a time um there are some bits you know like the, the real like the crushes and um, the unrequited love kind of thing and then as well there's definitely the absentee parent trope in this which a lot of people really really dislike so that is there in this one. I did kind of like the atmosphere of it Um, I enjoyed kind of I don't know it, it felt a little bit like misty and I liked the kind of the real subtle things about witchcraft in it like we never really knew it was kind of up to the reader to decide whether we we believed that there was magic going on in this or whether it was just all hearsay or you know d like you know people just put, putting things out of proportion like but like what does magic really exist we're kind of left to decide that ourselves um near the end and i really liked the end i felt like the end really kicked things up a notch really made me excited to read the next book and um, i don't think i would buy the next book but i would definitely pick it up from the library this is a 3.5 out of 5 stars it's not like the best witch book ever but i do think that it like for something that's not it's not like very scary or very haunted or anything like that so if someone wants just like a very subtle witchy halloweeny read i would say this is a really good one you don't have to read this at halloween i just did because it's a little bit witchy but yeah 3.5 out of 5 stars i did quite enjoy it and i read it quite quickly the next book i read is a book i've had on my shelves for about three years now um and it's the wolf in the attic by paul carney and this is a book that i thought was going to be kind of like horror-esque haunt haunting kind of book one that would be really good for this time of year and it actually ended up being very different to what I thought it would be so this is about a little girl called Anna and it is in the 1920s and she lives in Oxford with her father and the two of them fled from Greece um, during World War One and uh, we know that they lost m most of their family um, in World War One in Greece including Anna's mother um, and Anna is very much on her own. She has her doll Pi as her only friend and um, her father doesn't really pay that much attention to her he kind of leaves her to her own devices and um, so she's a very lonely little girl and we see her kind of as she's starting to grow up a little bit she's starting to try and wander away from the house that she's kind of confined in and she meets these kind of band of traveling and um, they're described as gypsies in the book I know some people don't like the word gypsy used to describe this kind of um, uh, race of people and um, but did you, where gypsy is used in this though not ne not necessarily in a negative connotation and um, but she finds these band of people anyway um, and they are kind of like Romany gypsies but not really there's kind of like more to them and um, kind of more secrets around them and she becomes enamored by these people and eventually um one ends up in her attic um, so this is mostly historical fiction with a very slight touch of urban fantasy um and i did really like the writing in this i thought the writing like the style of writing the descriptions i really really enjoyed um, and i very much like you know really like took them in and um, i like the fact there are actual cameos in this by uh, J.R. tolkien and c.s lewis because they were both i think in oxford around this time and um, and they actually show up and kind of become anna's friends for a little while and that was actually really nice um but you kind of don't really know it's them until you kind of maybe look at the back and you figure out that he has kind of put them in um and it's done in a very clever way way um like they can just be they're just like kind of be two nice friendly characters in it but then once you realize who they are it just kind of has a new element to the story and it's just like a nice kind of side thing to the story um i definitely didn't really enjoy how this ended um it just ended on this note where i was a bit like hmm okay um 
and yeah I couldn't really decide how I felt about it I definitely liked the first half better than the second half and um, I will say as well that there is um, a point in this where Anna does get her period and it is described and so any kind of period rap is always good in these kind of books especially to have a book written by a man um, about a young girl who's kind of coming into her womanhood and um, I really enjoyed kind of the conversation she had around the people who were helping her when this happened to her um, and kind of the conversation about how you know her childhood is ending and her womanhood is beginning and just this really kind of point in her life where things are changing she's definitely not a child anymore and I think anyone who's obviously had a period can relate to that um so yeah I did really enjoy that conversation around it and I enjoyed the fact that it was in it um and yeah any kind of that kind of rep is always a plus for me um so I give this a three out of five stars in the end it wasn't one I absolutely loved but it wasn't one I hated um and I'm glad I finally read it because it has been on my bookshelf for quite a while the next book I finished was an audiobook I've been listening to for the past month and that is Maestra by Ella Silton and this is kind of like a crime thriller about a girl um, called Judith who works in this art gallery. I think she went to Oxford or somewhere or some fancy university to study an art degree and now she works in this very fancy art gallery in London. Um, and she ends up... Um, she ends up getting fired because she finds out that there is kind of a scam going on um, in the art gallery and she's also kind of working in this club that's kind of um she's kind of like not like an escort but she's kind of like you know a companion for these men who go to this club and she gets paid a lot of money for it but she's not like she's not like a prostitute like she's not having sex with them she's just like talking to them um and so there's this kind of like seedier sexier side to the story as well and then there's like the art gallery side which is like super posh and super rich and all this kind of thing and basically after she gets fired um things kind of take a turn and Jude ends up kind of running around Europe with a lot of money and a lot of weird things happen and she kind of gets this kind of bloodlust and starts killing people like left right and center and it is just not very good um like for an audiobook it was quite entertaining but there's just something about this that was so tacky and so like I don't know like it kind of came across as something that was trying to be super smart and super um like indulgent because you know you have all this art like all this art talk and this talk about all these artists and all these famous artists and all this money being splashed around and like I don't care about art I'm not interested in art like at all so the art just talk just went right over my head and I don't know if the author was trying to be like oh look I know so much about art um or like you know because there's so much of it that's quite unnecessary I think in the story for just the average reader who has no interest in art um then there's like all these sex scenes and like not one sex scene was just like an average sex scene it was all extremely explicit like really really pornographic in nature um and like when you're listening to that rather than reading you're a little bit like going up the road and you're like ooh. Ooh, okay um so like that was kind of new for me as well I haven't really listened to these kind of book like li listened to these kind of scenes on audiobook before and I didn't really know how to react to it at first like I'm fine with reading it um but it's just a little bit of a different experience when it's been like you know spoken to you um but yeah like the sex scenes weren't good they were just like they were just overly explicit overly pornographic they were there I think they were mostly for shock factor um there wasn't any kind of like you know like enjoyment you could get out of them like they were just quite quite violent at times as well um and yeah like I just didn't really enjoy it. I just I don't like things being put in for shock factor and I feel like that what these were for um Judith Hurst as a character is just not a nice character she's a very dislikable character she's not a dislikable character you can like she's just a dislikable character um very someone who's like into herself and over the top and you know gets away with a lot of things that don't make sense like I feel like a lot of the stuff that happens especially near the end of this book just don't really make sense and I'm like this would never happen in real life someone would not get away with this stuff in real life um so yeah like, like she gets away with a lot of stuff because of her looks as well like she she gets a lot of like money and like things handed to her because she's pretty and because she's thin um, and there's so much fat shaming in this book there was this one character near the start of this book um, who is someone who comes into the club um, and La or Judith is kind of like his companion and n there's no point in this book where this man is mentioned without his weight being mentioned because he's met like he is described as being grossly overweight and um, obese and there's never a point where his weight just isn't mentioned in some way any scene that he is in and I'm like yes okay I know he's fast he's overweight why does that have to be mentioned all the time and in very much in a negative way um always in a way that may you know he's he's gross he's you know really unattractive um it's really hard to be around him um because he's so fast like you know and it's just it's just like so awful um 
yeah I just it was really kind of it was so off-putting um there was it there is actually this review on Goodreads for this book um, and literally all it says is imagine going to Oxford and then writing this book and even though that is really like it's really harsh it made me laugh because I do kind of agree with it in a way um but yeah I gave this two out of five stars I didn't really enjoy it though saying that if I'm really stuck for something to listen to an audiobook I might pick up the second one from my library audio app um but that would only be if I really was stuck the last book I finished this week was Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero um I've spoken this about this briefly in my reading vlog my cozy reading my vlog this is kind of like Scooby-Doo all grown up um, this about this gang of kids they are now in their uh, mid-twenties and when they were younger they were part of this um, kind of like club and they used to solve mysteries and um, a lot of the time they were just it was just people in costumes um, but they have decided to go back to their very last um, investigation and they feel like everything wasn't as it seemed it seemed that there was a little bit more supernatural stuff going on and they've decided like years later to go back and figure out what is going on I like the first half of this better than the second half and um, I feel like it went on for too long I just yeah it definitely could have been about 100 pages uh, shorter Um, there were all these really weird comments made about one character who's described as being a tomboy when she was growing up and kind of like, you know, like one of the boys um, and there was all these these comments made by other characters about the fact that maybe she was transgender and maybe she actually wanted to be a man and she even though she clearly identified as a woman um there was just these really weird comments made quite a lot by other characters about this one character and it was just really weird almost transphobic in nature at times um didn't really enjoy that as at all um the only character i really liked in this book was the dog who's kind of like scooby-doo and um, his name is tim and yeah I, I he's kind of the only thing I really liked about this book Um, I gave this a three out of five stars Um, I kind of feel like I know what the author was trying to do it just wasn't done very well Um, yeah and as I said I said on my reading vlog as well there's a bit at the back of this book in his about and it says there how a lot of his books have women kissing in them and I'm like why does that have to be in an about section that's just weird like I just I don't know I don't really agree with that being in an about section Um. So yeah, like I like I, it feels like a seedy thing. It's not like you know, oh look, my books have good like female female relationships. It's like ooh, women kissing. Um. So yeah, I didn't really I didn't really like that. It kind of put me off the author. And then the last book I'm reading this week, I'm not quite finished. I have just over 100 pages left, um, 150 pages left maybe. That is This Cruel Design by Emily Suvada. Um, and I will talk about that more next week. But I'm really, really enjoying this so far. This could be a five star read. I don't know yet. But I'm very much enjoying it. Everything I've read, please let me know what you guys have been reading down below. If you guys have any comments about the books I have read, I would love to know as always. And I'll see you guys again next time.